Hi, my name is Christy Knott, and I'm a longtime attender here at Good Shepherd, and I also work on staff in our discipleship department. I want to share with you a quick story. Um, back in 2020, uh, my husband and I decided to take our kids to our most favorite place in the United States called, well, other than Oregon, but anyway, we went to this place called Escalante, Utah, and it is just this amazing, beautiful place. It's all desert with slick rock and red rock, and there's a lot of hiking. And so one day, we had taken our kids on a hike to see a couple of slot canyons. And we tried to leave pretty early, but it quickly became apparent that it was going to get very hot. And about three hours into our hike, actually, as we were heading out, we all but ran out of water. We all were sharing Um, one thing in a hydro pack. And by the time we reached our car, we were completely out of water and we were desperately thirsty. Thankfully, we had some bottled water in our car and I can't tell you how satisfying that was. It was like, oh yes, we were very thirsty because you know, our bodies they respond to hunger and thirst. But if we're really hungry, our stomachs start growling. If we're really dehydrated, our lips start getting dry and cracked, maybe bleeding, or we get lightheaded. You know, all these different things are symptoms of being hungry and thirsty. And and when you eat, when you drink, you're very satisfied. Now, on the flip side, if you are offered food and water and you're really not that hungry, you're not that thirsty, it's not that satisfying. You're like, well, thanks. And you kind of take it as an, you know, it feels kind of obligatory a little bit. Um, and that's because there's this sense that our sat- we are only satisfied to the measure that we are hungry and thirsty. If we are very hungry, we're going to be very satisfied. If we're very thirsty, we're going to be very satisfied. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. In other words, blessed are those who realize that in order to be in relationship with God, they need to be who they ought to be, and that is righteous. Blessed are those who are in Christ and yet daily recognize this disparity between who they are in Christ, that is, they are righteous, and then how they think, what they desire, and how they actually live their lives. And so they cry out for more of His righteousness. Are we hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Are we hungry and thirsty to be blameless before God in Christ? Are we hungry and thirsty to live our lives in His ways in the power of the Holy Spirit? Jesus says we will not be satisfied unless we are. Like one of my favorite artists says, only the thirsty come to the fountain of life. And that fountain of life is Jesus. He is our righteousness. And when we put our trust in him, we are trusting in his righteousness that it has satisfied us on the cross and then it will satisfy us someday when he returns or when we go home. And we will not rest until that day in another world when we are in his presence and are fully satisfied. And if you're like me, I mean, I've been studying this passage and it just it just makes me go, Lord, I need more because I know that's not me and I really struggle to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so here's some ideas to just help develop that within us. So first, pray for an awareness of sin in your life. Pray that you would be aware of your sin, but also be aware of the sin and the corruption in the world as well, and, and let that reality um, drive you to Jesus more and more. And then second, pay attention to broken relationships in your life, you know, as far as it depends on you. As far as it depends on you, pay attention to the broken relationships um, in your life because it's just a symptom of not living in God's ways. And so we need to learn to be desirous of him more than wanting our own way in those relationships. And third, this is one we don't really talk about often in the church, but dedicate some time to fasting. 
and let some of those hunger pains drive you to Christ and say, Lord, I want to desire righteousness more than I even want food, even more than I want water, whatever that thing might be. And then fourth, open the God-breathed word. Remember, Josh just spoke about this recently, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Let God's breathed out word, let it teach you, rebuke you, correct you, and train you in righteousness so that you can be fully equipped for every good work. Let this desire for righteousness daily draw you into Christ's saving work on the cross and into fellowship with him who is the bread of life. He is the living water. May we feast and drink deeply of him and let him transform our thinking, our desires, and our actions, recognizing that someday, praise God, it will not always be this way. We will be satisfied. We will be satisfied. And in this way, we show off to a starving world that those cravings that we have in life, they can be satisfied in Christ. So let's get hungry. Let's get thirsty and let our laziness, let our apathy, let our sin drive us to see our desperate need for his righteousness and turn to Christ who satisfies us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We will be satisfied.